Okie dokie. Welcome back. Hello, future self, and hello, everybody else who has decided to come back and take a look at where we're at. So, um, last time I was kind of rendering in the metal here uh, for his helmet seems to be coming along we determined where our light source is coming from so I think we should go ahead and just pick up from where we left off um, and continue to develop the metal areas of the composition so let's go ahead we already got that base down um, I'll probably go ahead and make this a bit darker. And I have my hard brush right here. Oops, I'm going to go ahead and just hide this real quick. Okay, so there, there's some darker bits here. soften that up just a little bit not too soft but just enough to kind of help me blend um, when I blend uh, what I tend to do is I'll go kind of back and forth you know the whole push-pull um, definitely makes it a bit easier once you have a very soft brush as opposed to a um, harder brush but I'll go and kind of sample the the values and uh, just go back and forth. I know there's probably easier ways of, of accomplishing this same type of, of effect, but for me, this is kind of my way of going about it. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Thank you, Control-Z. really just start to establish where my dark areas are going to be. I mean, this is very rough. Um, and I might actually go ahead and just give it a, a bit more form. Not getting too crazy because I do want to save some spots for my highlights. But again, just, just giving it slight form. Um, that way it, um, it is perceived of having um, some contours. That's going to be important for this kind of, uh, this kind of work. It's a very much a deception of the eye. You're convincing an audience that something is that something looks like something in particular. Um, and that's tricky for an artist. Okay, come on. Oh, my poor brush, my poor computer. There we go. Um, as you saw up here, this nifty application, uh, it's a plugin. It's called Mixos. It's a great way, especially if you come from a very traditional background for painters. This is basically a digital palette. So rather than having to go over here and mix your brushes and use swatches, swatches are kind of a bother for me. Um, I, I love having a palette. Having a palette just makes it easier. And the beautiful thing about this palette is that you can actually mix the colors and get some differential values in that, in that color range. So that's really the beauty of having Mixos as, uh, as your digital palette is that it, it really does feel like a um, uh, really does feel like um, it's it's closest to a real palette as you can have in a digital sense. Um, it really does help with kind of catering to my traditional um, traditional background, and certainly helps too with the the whole process. Um, because again, uh, you can get that really nice in betweens, and you know, not s worry so much about having to uh, find that color again, or you know, go back to swatches. Um, I know that you can use the color picker, but um, 
if you want to stay consistent, uh, I've found myself losing some some values and getting you know grayer and muddier and muddier because I keep pulling from from the composition and not from um, you know uh, untainted uh, untainted source. So that certainly helps with making your uh, making the compositions uh, a lot more consistent and feeling like they, they have a bit more of uh, a crisp uh, tonality to them and they don't feel sporadic and disorganized. I mean, that's just me in general, so I mean, I can't escape that, but maybe some of you can and um, tell me about it. Tell me how great it feels. All right, so uh, I'm getting distracted. And in all honesty, his his poor head is very much scrunched in. You m possibly many of you viewers have been um have been seeing that or and um you know, are trying to yell through the screen at me, fix his bloody head. This isn't, uh, this doesn't look right. His poor head is scrunched in too far. Um, so I'm going to pull a very digital artist move. Um, and I'm not going to use the lasso. I'm going to teach uh, or remind my future self the other way of doing this, just in case I forget, because it's a, it's a bit of an interesting process. So what you do is you make another layer. I switch over to a very soft brush. That way, once we get the selection that we want, it's not hard-edged. It's, it's very easy to blend in uh, once you have adjusted what you needed to adjust. So um, you make a new layer, as I did here. You're going to go up to your brush tool, and we're actually going to go ahead and select it. So holding down the uh, right click, if you're using a mouse, I'm using my pen, obviously, so I held the pen down. We're going to use our mixer brush. So in our selection here, you actually cannot see this off screen. Uh, this is unfortunate, but you want to set it to dry. I think by default, it's going to, going to be either wet or moist. Uh, set it to dry, completely dry. There's a couple options. There's dry light load, dry heavy load. You want just specifically dry. Um, next to it, there's actually going to be a swatch and you can either load the brush with a specific color or clean the brush. What you want to do is make sure that that brush is clean. Um, and then once you make your selection, it will kind of give off um, the value that you had. All you have to do for that though is just clean your brush again. And then once you apply the brush, you're not actually seeing anything go onto the um, onto the piece here, which is good. That's that's exactly what you want. And once you have that selection made, um, you kind of have to wing it in that you are relying on your vision to kind of help guide uh, where your selection is going to be. Uh oh, circle of death. Once you have that selection, you can actually go ahead and Control T or Transform. And what's that? What's what that's going to do is actually take all of what you selected via the brush into um, into a single layer. So that is what I just did. As you can see, it actually kept it retained the the previous layer, but which is fine. We can go ahead and actually just uh, either paint over it or erase it. But I want to get his head in more of a comfortable position because he was really he looked pretty cramped, so we'll go ahead. That looks that looks about right. If his chest is right in here, you know his neck should come down into um, into his chest right there. So that that looks really good to me. So we're gonna keep that. Um, rather than going ahead and just working on this top uh, layer, we can go ahead and actually just merge the layer. Uh, down into our previous layer and the reason I'm doing that is because I do want to just paint over it I don't want to erase underneath um, I already have values down here that I can just change over, change up and, and paint over so we're going to move back 
to the brush tool and I'm actually going to erase it looks like a little bit so I pressed E just now to switch back over to my eraser so that I can go ahead and get rid of any of the uh, the softer bits that were selected during that uh, during that transition there and um, his arm let's see what's going on oh, there we go so his arm is actually going to be moving up a little bit here so his his forearm is going to be right here um, and then I'm going to go ahead and just put that in so that it more of a placeholder right now and then we can work on that later um, I will erase oops just a little bit so that we can have enough room to play around with that form because his forearm on this arm doesn't look terribly thick he's not a Popeye he's definitely strong but not he's no no Popeye all right, so continuing on, I'm just going to fill this in with a, a just a, um, a flat, very flat uh, value. And then I'm going to go ahead and fill the rest of this in with a bit of a lighter neutral value so that um, I can just kind of have a placeholder. I can see... Um, what needs to, to happen later on and uh, this is something I may actually have to develop as well um, as of right now so I'm just going to push this back just a little bit there we go and I'll step back here take a look and yeah you know that looks a lot better I like that alright getting his contours flushed out or his silhouette as some people may refer it to Man, my poor computer is having a very very hard time or my laptop I should say is having a very very hard time keeping up with this unfortunately as of right now um, Finances are a bit short, so I can't really afford to either upgrade. Um, I do want to get a larger hard drive space for my PC desktop so that I can comfortably, um, you know, work on these projects without having to feel like I'm, you know, being slowed down. Um, I have a safe place for my storage so I can work on these projects. Um, but something that I can probably obtain in the near future. So looking at references here, there are uh, there's there's quite a bit of folds that uh, that you tend to see in rhinos. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to replicate that in his uh, in his flesh here. And kind of tone down the val uh, oops tone down the volume a bit because it's in a darker darker area. I'm going to pull a little bit from here though so that I can get some some depth, some highlights, kind of get a better idea of, for the viewer of what exactly is going on. And um, you know we, we probably would see some rim lighting up here so I'm actually going to go ahead and just a little bit. Not a, not a whole whole lot because um, Again, our light source is kind of coming up from the top, and uh, if we go too hard, it's gonna, it might look a little weird. Um, maybe not. Maybe I'm being a bit too cautious in that regard, but I digress. Caution never hurts. Okay. He's a bit lumpy. You know, that, that could change. Oops. Wrong value. Um, we've got to think about his pauldron here. Uh, his pauldron would have to safeguard, 
you know, not only his shoulders, but sometimes you see that go, go down into, you know, the neck area. So maybe that's what I'm going to do right here is make sure his neck is safely protected. And that might actually go over. Yeah. Yeah. That would, that would, hmm. His form's a bit different. Uh, here we go. Here we go. That's that's a lot better. It uh, has some consistency as to what's going on on the his uh, his helmet here. Um, so that will give us uh, some nice form, but also some consistency in his uh, in his armor design. So that looks good. I'll keep that. I like the looks of that so far. I'll pull this down just a little bit. Give us some some room to play with here. Um, so I probably will kind of cut this off in certain areas. Uh, give myself a break. That way I can I can get this uh, make these videos into bite sized pieces so that you're not spending you know two hours of your life watching me talk about art and doodling. Um, I'm thinking about cha kind of changing up my format a little bit just for my YouTube audience. Um, I very I, I will keep this this format for my Patreon supporters because I feel like that is a valuable thing to kind of see the inside of the artist mind. And uh, that's very much something that people would, you know, um, put their finances into. I'm not so much a, a, of a teacher as I am uh, still a student, and I'm still learning. But that doesn't mean, you know, my shortcomings wouldn't hold value towards uh, other, other artists who are, are either trying to get into art or not sure kind of the approach or technique technique uh, so that that might change my format might, might change I might just do uh, you know put these whole videos together once I'm actually completed with this actual piece and make it into a speed drawing and then have that on my YouTube channel and um, you know have you know these more in-depth talks uh, specifically for my Patreon viewers and supporters. All right, let's go into the highlights. Let's let's have some fun. And for my highlights, so we know the source is coming from this direction. There is going to be a lot of reflective light, but it's not going to be as strong. So this this lighting, these highlights are probably not going to be as strong um, in certain areas. There is going to be kind of a lip here, so I'll make that pretty prominent and uh, again some reflective light coming off this lip um, there's there's going to have to be some kind of break here some kind of line some kind of uh, dividing line maybe not a line but dividing values that will help describe um, this this form it's a very complex form so I may have to to really trial and error this one and see what seems to work what doesn't seem to work um, really just kind of go from there I know that my higher highlights though are gonna be on this side of the form And not sure if I'm going to have that lip up or not. Yeah, I don't even know if people want to watch me paint at all. Like, that's that's perfectly fine, though. I know I'd like to come back and just kind of see, wow, that's that's how I did things? Oosh. That poor, poor me. That was not the approach to go with. But that's good. Um, if I can come back and see where my shortcomings are, where I'm not kind of succeeding, um, 
again, that's going to be something of value to uh, future audiences who might come back and take a look. Okay, so I have some of my reference here, just seeing how um, how these surfaces take take light and reflect it, uh, and it's uh, it's tricky. It's uh, especially if you don't have an actual actual reference. So if you don't have the actual piece of armor in front of you that you're trying to replicate doing this from your from your head uh, makes it a lot trickier but we're working with it we'll see what we can accomplish here okay some rim lighting there's going to be a, a few highlights on this this side because there's going to be a fairly heavy uh, reflective light and a rim light that's going to be um, on his back side of the, uh, the pauldron here. This isn't going to be it, obviously. It's not as bright, but it's going to help set up for future things. Um, you know, depending on how buffed the, the armor is, um, that kind of, that, that really determines how reflective the armor is. So I'm thinking this might be fairly dull, so it's not going to be, it's not going to have as sharp of a reflective property as maybe, um, you know, like chrome plating or something like that that you'd see on modern cars where it's hyper-reflective and almost a mere finish. Um, that's not what I'm going to be reflecting here. This is very much, you know, this was manufactured by big, strong rhinos, um, have three fingers and a thumb and may not have the most uh, you know gentle touch so that is my thought in terms of any excuse to, to get out of rendering hyper um, reflective surfaces um, I will take that okay let's try to get this reflective edge here. Um, my assumption is that it wouldn't be directly on the edge, but fairly close. And we might see some hard light on that second reflection there. Um, might go back in here. Oops, that looks a bit too, too strong. And Give that a bit more. Actually, kind of go ahead and do another one here. Not as not as sharp, but enough to kind of help suggest some form and uh, kind of help with the uh, reflective, the illusion of a reflective property. And it seems to be kind of. It seems to be doing all right, so I'm, I'm happy with it. Uh, we'll kind of continue going from here. Um, this might be a good spot for a break, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, you know do kind of a break off so that I can section this off uh, accordingly. So this will be my break. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Um, again. We'll probably see some changes in the future on my uh, on my setup and how I uh, how I do these videos. But uh, for now, uh, we'll see you in the uh, in the next one. Thank you.